Welcome back to News Geelong. Dennis Scanlon is an outstanding man of Australian radio that is now in his fourth decade. The Voice continues its presentation, light banter and sharp wit on Geelong's 94.7 The Pulse. News Geelong spoke with Dennis recently regarding his golden years in radio. Dennis, how long have you been in Geelong now? Um, about 30 years, Graham. We, we came for uh, probably, um, I thought I'll, I'll stay in Geelong until the 3GL job lasts, and as long as, uh, as soon as Hoyt's Media came along, that was the end of that. But uh, here we are 30 years later. Uh, I was with Country FM for a while, and now The Pulse, and uh, I think they'd have to drag me out in a coffin, Rollo. I, I really believe that. Uh, I just love, like you, I just have a great passion for radio. I love it. And I suppose I said in that article with Tom Bennett, uh, the minute I don't like it, or they don't like me, I'll leave. But uh, a bit like yourself, they'll have to drag us out. And of course, one of those uh, highlights of the article Tom Bennett did in last week's Geelong Advertiser was recalling the uh, wonderful days on 3DB with Graham Kennedy, the King. Remarkable man, Graham. He was a very complex man. He, uh, he was shy, very introverted, completely unlike what he was on, uh, on television, uh, very, very unsure of himself. I don't think he ever realised what a great talent he was. He sort of, he'd keep saying to me, he'd crack a gag and he'd say, when we went to a music break, Dennis was that funny. And I thought, here's this guy, here's this incredible talent who um, doesn't know how good he is. But he was very good to me. It was always, it was never the um, Graham Kennedy, Dennis Scanlon show. It was always the Dennis Scanlon, Graham Kennedy show. And now settling down at 94.7 FM, the pulse here in, uh, in Geelong. You've gone from strength to strength with your uh, early morning radio series. Yes, uh, Rollo, as you know, community radio is completely different. You've got to adjust. There are some frustrations. Uh, but, yeah, it's good fun. As you would know, they basically leave you alone. And you haven't got to worry about that awful thing called ratings. Uh, <laughs> so you just sit there and basically do their thing. And uh, they basically said to me, well, uh, as long as you don't get us a writ, we'll give you a free reign. And I think you and I know the laws of libel and slander, so we, uh, we don't go there. And the, uh, the, the, the probably fortunate thing is that they've replaced Graham Kennedy with a big Dick Philpott. Yes, an amazing man. I mean, uh, Dick Philpott is, in his own right, extremely funny. He's a very, fr naturally, I think, and the late Hartley Cooper, as you'd know well, a lovely man. And when you used to get Hartley Cooper and Fred uh, and Dick, um, Dick Philpott together, it was absolutely hysterical. The one-liners just used to come. But Dick's a very funny man and so community involved. As you would know, he's on the board of Buckley's, he's on the board of the GDFL, and he comes in regularly and uh, a different humour to Graham, but he's still an hysterically funny man. Continuing to raise the awareness of the impact of family violence on the community, the Surf Coast Shire councillors and local secondary students planted 1,758 white flags at the front of Banyul Worry Fields in the lead up to White Ribbon Day. Ian Nichols has more. We're down on the surf coast again in front of the new community complex here where school children today are planting 1,758 white flags. It's all about White Ribbon Day coming up on November 23. It's a campaign against violence, against children and women. And the number of 1,758 is the number of children affected by family violence. And that's why we're planting these flags today as a a symbol of what the children think about the future and violence against women and children. I'm here on behalf of all men because uh, men need to get this message through that they can't violate women in any way, shape or form. Well, we know on 23rd of this month, the White Ribbon Day, of course, gets that message across about violence against women and ultimately children. And it's a message that's got to be got through in a pretty strong way. And this, this uh, demonstration today will certainly draw a lot of attention to it. We we'll certainly hope so, Ian. I think uh, the important way to get the message through in any kind of forum these days is through education of our kids that are coming through our schools today and this is a wonderful opportunity for our kids from Surf Coast to do that and our kids are representing every one of the 1,758 people that we know of in the G21 region, uh, the Geelong region, that have been affected by violence. Now maybe we could talk to uh, the students from the Surf Coast Secondary College, Ned and the young lady, what was her name? Bridget. Bridget. Maybe they could just come over a little bit closer and we might just be able to get a word or two. Uh, Bridget, how do you feel about today? 
Um, I think this cause is a very important cause and that everyone needs to know about it because it doesn't go recognised and um, this, I hope, um, a lot of people will stop while they drive past in their cars and really take notice of all the flags that we're putting in today. It's a great awareness campaign, isn't it, uh, Ned? I'm sure that you're very happy to be part of today's proceedings too. Uh, yeah, it's great to see um, all these faces coming past in their cars, just noticing all the white flags, and yeah, it's a really good cause, so yeah, let's hope people notice. Well, we know that there's a community breakfast here at the uh, Grand Pavilion on the 23rd, and we hope as many people will come along and show their support for that as well. Absolutely. Look, we'll, we'll encourage our kids to be there, of course, as many kids as we can get to that breakfast. But also, we're going to encourage our kids, we have already, to make sure they spread the message at school and beyond school with their families and friends outside of school. Important that they share the message when they, when they go back to their peers. Yes, look, I think it's fantastic that the children of our region understand that domestic violence is an issue and that we all need to work together to discourage it from occurring. I think when you look at the beautiful white flags here, one in isolation is not a lot, but when you put them together and you see the magnitude of the issue, I think it is a really fantastic representation of the significance of the event and I think as a council we are wanting to promote a very strong message with White Ribbon Day. We will be having a breakfast uh, later this month on the 23rd which will be highlighting um, the prominence of it and also uh, what we're doing to, to I suppose discourage it occurring in our region. Yes well we hope as many people as possible come along to your magnificent Grand Pavilion. It's from uh, 7.45 in the morning and uh, they need to RSVP fairly quickly though if they're going to be there. That's right. Look it'll be a fantastic occasion. I mean I think it really it is a celebration of a, a community that gets together Together to actually acknowledge issues and to start working together to overcome them. Well, today has been very impressive. I'm sure that uh, this is going to come under notice now over the next couple of weeks as people drive down a very busy Surf Coast Highway. Yes, I think the Surf Coast Highway is, is the right place to have it. It's uh, symbolic at our council offices and there's a lot of traffic that comes by here and I'm hoping that they will see these white flags and take a moment to think about uh, White Ribbon Day and the importance of a community that supports one another and actually defies uh, violence against families. At the planting of 1,758 white flags on the Surf Coast Shire, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. As we go to a break, we'll be back with sport and our own Mitsuku Cleary after this.